This research paper, which was published in the Journal of Sports Engineering, is looking at accuracy and repeatability of wrist joint angles in boxing using an electromagnetic tracking system. A bit of background on the study. So first of all, it was a study done in collaboration with Sheffield Hallam University and Great Britain Boxing. The background really is when we look at the injuries that happen at the hand, they show the highest rate of injury in both competition and training. And there was a study published in 2017 by Luis Morotal and um, one of the main authors, um, myself, uh, Ian Gatt, uh, was involved in that and looked at GB boxing between 2005 and 2012. So even when we take the last four years, 2016 to 2020, it still remains the highest incidence, but also is the highest severity. And it's important because, you know, sometimes you can have injuries that have the highest incidence, but you know, don't result in the highest severity. But in boxing, the hands and wrist are pretty much your bread and butter. When you look at the distribution, you've got knuckle injuries, you've got injuries around the thumb, and then the CMC, so the carpal metacarpal joint, becomes a very important aspect because although it's part of the hand, mechanically, uh, it works a lot with the wrist. And that's where, again, looking at the background of the study, takes us. So here is a mechanism of injury in a boxer. Stamina and strength and willpower now. Another body shot from Clark who winces as they come close together. See the right hand as it impacts on the left hip of the opponent. So the opponent is the one white. And so what's happening there is as the wrist is impacting, you see in yellow is the metacarpal bone, the CMC joints between the yellow and the blue, and the blue is one of the carpal joints. And when it hits, it twists and creates a bit of a, a ligament strain. So when you examine it in clinical practice, you'll be looking for an injury on the dorsal ligament. And here's a clinical test. There's actually a video, uh, credit to Mike Hayton, who's a surgeon we work with, who's examining the boxing. You see lots of movement happening in what we class as the second and third carpal metacarpal joints. So there shouldn't be any movement at all in the uh, carpal metacarpal joints of the index finger and the middle finger just to help uh, lay people classify. So that's the background. So obviously injuries happening there. So we want to try and understand what's going on at the wrist. So the first thing is to find a good methodology. Now, when you look at a lot of sports, one of the common factors is that the hands and wrist are not covered. But in boxing, you've got the wrap and also you've got the glove. So trying to use some form of methodology that involves direct visualization makes it really hard. That's why we opted to go down the electromagnetic route because you don't need that direct visualization. So in this study, we first used some surrogate testing using a polyamide material and you can see the sensors classes receivers here and then in black is the actual digitization of it we then used quasi static testing which actually it's using the boxes and we recruited 29 elite boxes 26 men three women all having an orthodox stance, which means their left hand leading and all healthy, no injuries. And in the quasi-static testing, we got them to the extreme positions of flexion, extension, radial arm deviation. And we compared that 
using obviously uh, a direct visualization which is more of um, what tends to be used so your gold standard and then the third part of the study was punch testing so you can see the pictures ABC is you can see the sensors and then they're covered with the bandage and then they're covered with the glove and then the picture on the right is the actual in vivo testing we did data analysis using visual 3d and the orientation of the hand relative to the wrist was defined using cardinal angles so your xyz rotation sequence and the picture over there you can see on the top is actually the information we got using the x axis and the y axis so the x axis was actually your flexion extension and the y axis was your radial and ulnar deviation and the the top part you see the quasi static testing and then at the bottom you've got the punch testing here is a video showing visualization of it so these are your hook shots and in fact you can probably see it better because the elbow is not actually moving a lot it's so more movement in the shoulder and obviously what we're seeing there are the movements happening at the wrist with the graphs there and then you can see the difference here with the jabs so you see more movement happening at the elbow now there's more extension going to happen so here's the first shot here's another so the results looking at accuracy and repeatability was that the electromagnetic tracking system agreed with the video based system so using per t test so for the surrogate it was really good at less than 0.2 degrees which is obviously you know you, you don't have any um, errors coming from human artifacts so your, your soft tissue structures and the quasi static testing was less than six degrees which agrees with lots of other studies both systems showed a good intraclass coefficient of reliability and then the punch testing which is obviously the important part for us for both repeated jab and hook shocks the electromagnetic tracking system showed good and substantial reliability so conclusions and future direction what does the study tell us well the risk kinematics during punching activities can be measured using an electromagnetic tracking system so the next step is to actually quantify wrist kinematics, is to understand what's actually happening in the wrist. And as why is this important, looking from a future direction, is that, you know, boxers rub their hands, boxers protect their hands. And as we said, from the background, it's important to understand what's happening at the wrist when boxers are punching and obviously why injuries can happen from a mechanical point of view and what other things we can do to try and prevent those things so thanks for your attention hope you enjoyed this video and obviously do suggest that you read the original article which has more in detail information